welcome back to the Snivy Pad. Please make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and share it with all your friends. So today will be a part one of three series, which will be going over my collection. So the first two parts, we will be doing my binders with all of my cards and stuff in it, like all of my DX cards and stuff. That will be the first two parts. The second part will be, will be me going over my vintage stuff. And the third part will be going over my sealed stuff. And if you guys want more videos like this, more IRL videos, then make sure again to smash like on the video. When we get to three likes on this video, we will be doing the next part in the series. So make sure you like that video and smash the like button. Literally, if you have a phone, smash it. Show no mercy. So, um, I don't know. I'm going to get started before someone calls the police on me. So we are starting off with Full Art Rainbow Rare cards. So there are four types of Full Art Rainbow Rare cards. So we'll start with our VMAX cards. So our um, first one here is Dragapult VMAX. And before I get started and before I continue, know that I've been doing this for well over 10 years. I am very experienced and I'm, I'm an expert in what I'm doing. And there is no need to worry about these cards. These cards are all in perfect condition. Not a flaw on any of them. So yeah. Um, don't get triggered. Don't sue me. I'm not doing it. Just, just, just no. Just, just no. <laughs> I, I don't know. So yeah, we first have Dragapult VMAX, which is, I don't know why I put it in the sleeve again, but it is our first Rainbow Rare type of card here. We have, this one is from Sword and Shield, and we have another one from Sword and Shield, which is our trainer cards. This one, I hope you guys can see all the texture and stuff on it. Try, I'll get it a little bit closer and stuff for you. And you can definitely see all the little uh, speckles and stuff on there. This, these are some of the nicest ones, especially the Sword and Shield era ones, because they have all these nice speckles and stuff on it. It makes the cards look a little bit darker in the reflection here, because you can definitely tell like which ones are from Sword and Shield and stuff. But that is okay. I mean, that's just a sleeve, to be honest, the ones I'm in. But I just use these sleeves because they're extremely good. You basically, I don't know, you take them. You, you you can't bend them. They're like they're like metal sleeves. You you cannot bend them. And obviously, yeah, I'm not going to like try and rip them apart because that would not be good. But yeah, these are very very safe sleeves. But they do have the cost of that aesthetic, which is it sucks. But you know you got to do what you got to do. So we also have, like I was saying, the full art trainer rainbow rare type cards. And again, they have that texture of it. And hopefully you can see that like there. This one you can definitely see it on all those speckles and stuff on it. Very, very nice. So we'll put that back into the binder. We also have tag team full art cards and regular full art cards. These are both from the Sun and Moon era. Basically the only difference between these two is that one is a tag team, one isn't. They pretty much they look the same, the texture's the same, everything. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the Rainbow Rares. They haven't really changed that much throughout the years. I mean, obviously, they've gotten more intricate and detailed and stuff as we've gone from beginning Sun and Moon, Sun and Moon base set we can see here with, with gum shoes, and then gone all the way back and got more stuff and even better with Scissor V Max, you can see as Sword and Shield Dark Blaze. So, our next page here is our gold cards, which is very, very, very nice. This page in itself is worth like 100 bucks. And yeah, it is just insane how much this page is worth. Just in, I don't know. I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but if you haven't, I'll be the one to break the news to you. They aren't real gold. None of this, <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's just golden color. But that still doesn't take away from the value of it. Because they are still extremely, extremely rare cards. Which, I mean, honestly, amazing. <laughs> They're super rare cards. I mean, I'm not complaining. So, let's start off, we have, uh, for first example, we'll just do Tapu Koko GX card here. These are just the full art gold cards. The most expensive ones are definitely the Reshiram and Charizard versions of these. They are from Black and White Base Set. They are worth loads and loads of money. And the gold cards, you won't see that much texture on them because, I mean, that's really the thing for the Rainbow Rares and the full art cards, but they are still insanely good cards and stuff. So moving on, we also have just our other version of the regular gold cards and stuff. We have our Pokemon gold cards. And literally the only thing about this one is just that the borders are gold. There's nothing real special about them or anything. The board, it's just, I, I don't know. I personally don't think they're very nice. But I, I, I like especially the trainer cards and stuff better. But I mean, if you want to collect some stuff, 
go ahead. Go do you do you. As most people say nowadays, because, you know, it's 2021. Yeah, 2021. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe it still is 2020 in, in some country in the world. I don't know, but if you, uh, I'm just gonna stop talking. <laughs> so, um, yeah, 20, it's 2021. You want to collect something? You collect it! Don't do stuff that other people want you to do. Like, literally, if you think this is the best card in the world, get a billion of them. I don't care. If you like these cards, go collect it. That's the best thing about Pokemon. You can collect whatever you want. It's not just, like, even with magic and stuff. You have to you have to get these certain cards in order to do anything, and then you have to play the game and all this stuff. If you want to collect some cards, you go collect it. If you want to collect a GX card, you collect those GX cards. And that is the one, that is the best part about Pokemon. And, yeah, I'm going to stop yelling at you now. <laughs> So we also have Sword and Shield versions of the trainer cards. It's just a copy of Air Balloon. And Sun and Moon versions of the cards. Copy of Reset Stamp. And our X and Y versions of the cards. A copy of Energy Retrieval. And they do get, um, just like the Rainbow cards, they get ten times better throughout um, when they get older and stuff. So farther back you go, the worse it'll get. But, I mean, even recently and stuff, especially with Sword and Shield, they really upped their game with everything. Everything looks so nice from the V cards to the flower cards to everything. It looks so, so nice. So we also have here onto our next page. These two pages will just be some random stuff in here. We have our prime cards. These, um, example I'll show you, we'll do, um, B, no, Earth, Earth Ring, yeah. It's very hard to see because you have the golden text on there with the golden background and everything. It is very hard to see. And especially just the card and stuff. I mean, there hasn't been an Ursa Ur Ring card in forever. It's been a very, very, very long time. I think it's actually been since X and Y, which, believe it or not, has been the last time we have ever seen an Ur Ursa Ring card. I'm thinking Ursafu now, because that's what everyone's used to saying. Because, um, actually, fun fact for you guys, that actually won the World Cup recently. So we will be doing a video on that for you later this week, actually. Uh... Later this week would be in three days. So, uh, yeah, in three days we'll do an Arshifu V Max deck review. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Um, I don't know. It'll, it'll be coming up soon, though. I can guarantee you that, that we will be doing something like that soon. So, moving on, we have our Ancient Mew cards. So this card used to be worth, like, thousands of dollars. to be selling for tons and tons and tons of money. But Pokemon, a couple of years ago, did reprint it and got tons more copies and stuff out there. So, now, you, you, can, you can go on eBay. You could buy it for, like, five or six bucks. And I did not buy it when it was, like, $5,000. I bought it when it was three bucks. So, yeah, I'm, I'm thankful for that because... If I would have bought it when it was super expensive like that, you would have lost so much money. I know tons of people that have, they bought it, it was supposed to be an investment piece and all that stuff, and then all of a sudden it was re-released, and no one made their money back on that. Even the people that just sold it immediately still had to, like, lose money. They can only sell it for, like, I mean, there's, like, thousands and thousands and thousands of cards out there now that are exactly like this. And, um, actually, Pokemon is trying to do something new with this card. They've been doing a Charizard card in the works, which may or may not be for the 25th anniversary. We don't know, but, um, our best bet is going to be that there's going to be another card like this for the 25th anniversary. So, as we go on here, we also have a break card. Break cards were not really successful. Pokemon it was supposed to be this new thing and stuff, but they did a lot of experimental stuff like this, especially recently, and you'll see more of those later on in the video here. So we also have our level X cards, which is, yeah, we have down here and over here. We have our EX cards, and we have our Burning Net and Flare Ringer, or Head Ringer, sorry. So the Level X cards and the EX cards are pretty much just beta versions of what we have now. The Level X cards eventually evolved into Break cards, and the EX cards eventually evolved into, nope, yep, EX cards, which you see right here. So these are pretty much just primitive versions. They're still very expensive and very nice cards, but they are not, in my opinion, they're not as good as just the regular cards. So the Head Ringer is the X and Y version of stuff like our uh, Break cards. And on the next page, stuff like our 
Great Potion, and Computer Surge. So these were other cards. These are called a spec cards. These were like Prisms cards and stuff. And oh, look at that. There's more of them. Um, they were in the black and white era and stuff. So yeah, these are they're pretty expensive. They're both um well the computer search is a world championship, which really sucks. But the great potion is not, and I believe I have two of them. No, just one, never mind. So yeah, we do have one of those, which is a very, very, very expensive card. I mean they sell for like just like some random trainer card and stuff like this. They sell for like 50, 60 bucks now, and they're just going up because black and white is starting to enter its stage of being like sort of an older set. It's sort of transitioning now into being more expensive. I mean, just a year ago, you could pick up a black and white pack, a base up pack for like five bucks. Now you'd have to be paying somewhere between 20 and 30 bucks for it. Because everyone, everyone back then was just opening it up and without a care, who cares what's going to happen and stuff. And now it's caught up to everybody. And basically the people that are going to have all these packs and stuff, they're going to be happy. Because they're going to have all these different vintage stuff. And even just, like, I have a fossil pack, which will be shown off in the third video of this series. And that card is just, you know, that card is almost doubled in value this year. It started the year off at around $200, now it's around $450. And we'll, obviously that's for 2020. We've only been like three months into 2021. So, yeah. Um, Moving on, we have this card here, our Zapdos. And... This card is from Generations. It is That was the 20th anniversary set. Sort of like Shining Fates was for our 25th anniversary. It's not the official 25th anniversary or 20th anniversary sets, but people like to call it that because it released around that time. So this is one of the secret rares from this set. And it is, um, it's still another, it's another valuable card. All the cards in here are valuable cards in case you haven't figured that out already. And yeah, it can sell for 20, 30 bucks if you're lucky. They mostly just sell in the teens and low 20s. But still, that is that is pretty good just for some regular full art card. It's not even an EX card or anything, it's just some full art card. So um, we also have from Evolutions, this time out Generations, we have our secret rare cards. We have five of them. Technically, there's supposed to be four different versions of them. We have our Executor, which is Japanese. I, in case you haven't noticed, I don't talk or speak or read Japanese. So we have that one. We have Imakuni's Doduo, Flying Pikachu, and we have another one, which we do not have, unfortunately, which is Surfing Pikachu. So we have these cards. These are pretty much the Secret Rares from Evolutions. The I wouldn't really call them Secret Rares, though. So they're labeled as Secret Rares. Is, I'll, I'll pull one out for you. They're labeled as such on the bottom here, because you can see you can class a Secret Rare. If it'll focus here. Come on. Come on. Alright, it's not going to focus for me. So, um, basically, Secret Rares are classed because they have a higher number in front than they do in the bottom, so they are, they're secret rares. They're secret cards at the end of the set that are not listed in the set number, which is very, very nice. These cards, again, only sell for a couple bucks, but they're still very nice cards to have. So what does sell for a lot of money is legend cards. So I do have a complete copy of a legend card. I completely forgot where I've gotten this from. It was probably just some trade I did, um, like years ago and stuff. But it is a very, very nice card. It has tons. It's just, it is an insanely good card. The attacks and stuff are amazing. The card itself is gorgeous. What Legend cards do is you have two separate cards, and then you combine them to make one card. They're sort of like the break cards, kind of, except they literally just fold up and make one card. And when you're playing the game, they literally just appear like that in the active spot. But they can knock on the bench, which is a very fun, which is a fun fact for you all. Uh, that was, that was awful. I'm sorry. So yeah, these can be ranging from anywhere from like 100 bucks to like 500 bucks, depending on the the quality, condition, or if it's graded or not. Obviously, these are not graded, because why would they be here? And yeah, these are very, very nice cards and stuff. So yeah. Um, so we're moving on to Prism cards here. These, again, are like the Ace Spec and the Flare Gun ones. They're sort of just those weird cards, but they're from the Sun and Moon era this time. And we have a bunch of those. And, of course, we have a billion copies of the Super Playable ones. And if you don't know why, then I think you've got the wrong channel here. <laughs> I mean, don't unsubscribe or anything. Like, stay subscribed. 
do not unsubscribe ever <laughs> okay so we also have uh, which is a very cool one we have cyrus so this is actually a very very cool card it's very, it's horribly miscut but that is okay and it is a error card because if you read the text there the camera will focus um, I'll just read it to you. It says, you can play this card. You cannot play this card if you have any water or metal Pokemon in play. Your opponent chooses two bench Pokemon and shuffles them into all cards into them into your deck and into their deck and obviously shuffle their deck afterward. So it's supposed to say if you have any water or active in your active spots. So it was, it's pretty much just, it's a broken card. It's obviously banned because it is an error card, but it is still a very nice card to have. And unfortunately, we cannot get it graded because of that printing error on there and that because it is so, so miscut. The top is literally like a third of the size of the bottom, which I mean, it sucks, but things happen. So moving on to our next page, we have Shining Cards. These are another really cool adaptation of something that they did earlier on in the Pokemon series in the Heart Gold Soul Silver era. It's either it's either that or Mega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Don't quote me on there though. I might be completely wrong. I honestly don't know off the top of my head. So you have those. Those were only available in Shining Fates. They made different versions of them in Shining Leg in um yeah Shining in Shining Fates and Hidden Fates and. Yeah, these are from Shining Legends, sorry. There's so many of them now. There's Shining Legends, Shining Fates, Hidden Fates. There's all these different ones. It's very, it's very confusing. I mean, I don't know. Is it, is it, is it just me? It might just be me, but I don't know. There's, there's too many. They need to name these, the sets, like, different names. They can't just combine names and say, oh, look, it's, we, we combined two names. It's a set. No, yay. Like, that's not how it works. So we also have two amazing rare cards. So these are extremely rare cards now, apparently, because they're, you're only supposed to get like one of these in a booster box now. Originally, you were supposed to get like four or five of them, but like prism cards and stuff. But I, I've opened two boxes myself, and the only time I've gotten them is I've gotten two from two different pre-release boxes. I haven't even gotten any from booster boxes, which is um, it's, it's frankly ridiculous because you can't get anything. From these booster boxes anymore. I mean, in just booster boxes in general, the pull ratios are just horrible nowadays. They used to be you'd get like a guaranteed rainbow rare or gold card. You get like six GX cards, five prism cards. You get like ten hollow cards. Now, basically, if you're lucky, you'll get a full art card, a V Max, and like three V cards. If you're lucky, they've really nerfed the ratios of the booster boxes. So, I mean, it sucks, but, I mean, what are, you, what are you gonna do? Like, like pretty much the whole saying of the world right now. What are you gonna do? So, moving on, we have our EX cards and our Mega cards, which are down here, these three cards here. So, these are cool. My, my favorite, personally, is Heatran. I used to have this card a lot when I was younger. I, this was my, this was literally the only card I played for, like, three years straight. Especially if we can go back a couple pages to the level X cards, if you can play Heatran level X onto the Heatran the EX, it's a it's an amazing combo. It pretty much works every single time to your advantage, and you can really never lose with it. Well, you, you can lose, but you know, it's very hard to. You also have stuff like Mew. Mew is another super good one. It's actually a, a, one of the more expensive EX cards because it will allow you to copy your opponent's attack which is very, very nice, very, very, very nice indeed. Because you can see on the card here, all the speckles and stuff. This is actually a very nice card because it does have all kinds of different textures and speckles and stuff on it, which is very, very nice. So moving on, we have our full art cards, our full art EXs, Megas, and all that stuff. So we have um, our Edgeslash, we have Palkia, we have Mega Sharpedo, and we have Mega Alakazam. So they're just stock standard full art cards. They didn't really make a lot of these during the XY era. They were more rare, like rainbow rares and stuff, but they're still really cool to get. So moving on to GX cards. We have one, two, three, four, five, and almost six full pages of EX cards and well and tag team cards but you know they're they're tag team cards you can't leave them out or anything 
So, yeah, we have all these cards. Um, back in the day, I used to play tons of metal cards, especially with stuff like Dust Man to Cosma and Stack Attack or Static Attack at a Makata, Back at a Dakata, or whatever. As Unlisted Leaf says, there'll be a link to something. I don't know. I'll, I'll link something in the description for you guys to check out. So make sure you do check that out. And by the way, if you've made it this far into the video, you obviously like it. So make sure you like the video so we can do more of this sort of stuff and we can do part two to this where I can show off some of my other cards and stuff. And make sure you subscribe to the channel so we can get to 35 subscribers. As of recording this, we're at 31 subscribers. We just hit 30 and we just got someone else to subscribe to the channel. So if you are that 31 subscriber, shout out to you. You're awesome. And if you're any subscriber, again, shout out to you. You guys are awesome. For subscribing and like I said let's get to 35 subscribers so we can do some more live action videos like this because you guys are loving the live action videos like this so yeah make sure you subscribe to the channel like to the video and everything and let's get back to it so we also have our five copies of Tapu Lele now this used to be one of the best cards of all time the GOT or as you say in football or I mean I don't know. Does Tapu Lele look like Tom Brady? I mean, that's up to you. You can dispute that in the comments. I, I'm not. I'm not going to comment on that. I, I don't know. There's been a lot of people that have said that because you have um, the little helmet thing on top there. People saying that's like a football helmet, and then you have all the eyes and stuff and the hair. I, I don't know. I, I personally don't see it, but if you guys want to argue against that in the comments, that's up to you. You can go right ahead and do that. So, we also have our tag team cards, and of course we have a Snivy card in here, the mascot of our YouTube channel here, which is very, very nice. And it is a card in Japanese, which is also very, very nice. So, uh, that's a beat for the GX cards, except for our full art GX cards, and we're just going to kind of forget that's there for now. We have our full art tag team GXs, we have tag team trio GX, which is very, very nice. And we have three copies of the Dene. Again, if you don't know why we have all of those, then this is not the right channel for you. But still subscribe. We need 35 subscribers. So, um, yeah, we have all these different ones. There's tons of them. Uh, these are from all different sets. We have this one from Sword and Shield Base Set. It's from the Trainer's Toolkit. It's from Dragon Majesty. This is from Hidden Fates. There's all different ones in here. And they're all very, very nice and good looking cards. So going on to the V cards, sadly we don't have that many V cards at the moment because of the shortages of TCG stock. It is very, very hard to get any of it. But if you can get something of it, or you want it, go to Genesis Gaming and Hobby in Orchard Park in New York, where you can pick up some cards, which is very, very nice. They have great guys that work there, great prices, great deals, great everything. And they also have Play Pokemon tournaments on Monday at 6 o'clock p.m., so make sure you go to that. I doubt you will, because most of you probably live in, like, India or something, but just, I don't know. Shout out to them, I guess. So, we also have our full RV cards. This is our, um, one of our last sections here. We have Inteleon and Eldegoss. If we can get get rid of that Inteleon, like, turn into a Crobat or something, I don't know, then we'll be safe on that one. The Crobat um, is actually it's selling. It jumped up in price because rotation is going to be happening really soon, and no one is really going to be using Dedenes anymore, so everyone's going to be switching over to Crobats. So the Crobat V-Card Fuller card has been really jumping in price. It's all the way up to almost 50 bucks a piece now for the Fuller card, which is very good indeed. So with our last section for this binder and the video, we have our VMAX cards. We have Gardevoir, Rillaboom, Tapacoco, Skizor, and Snorlax VMAX cards and these are all again very very nice cards they just came out in sword and shield and with the tapu coco one it just came out in battle styles which i was lucky enough to pull in one of the pre-release kits which you can barely any find anywhere and actually with the pre-releases it's it sucks because you cannot get any points or anything which i will also be talking about in the video we covering the world cup and everything and what's going to be happening with that so make sure you stay tuned on the channel for all of that and that is the binder here and you know what i'm feeling generous so look at that let's do another binder let's go all right so going into the next binder here we have 
pre-release cards. So I go to tons and tons and tons of pre-releases. Every single time a set comes out, I, get, I go to the pre-release. I buy like five kits and stuff. We always get tons of these cards. So we have one, two, three, four and a half pages full of pre-release cards, which is very, very nice indeed. We have all of them ranging from Vivid Voltage all the way down to Forbidden Light, which was our my first pre-release that we went to down in some store. I forget which the name it is. Down in Buffalo area, uh, Western New York here. You probably, you I don't know, by, by this point you probably know where I live. You're going to end up showing at my house. I should probably stop talking about that then. So, uh, yeah, we have these cards here. These are like pre-release promos because they have the stamped um, set logo on there, as you can see there. This one has a bunch of um, Galaxy Hollow on there, which is very, very nice. So that will go back into there. And these are all very, very cool cards because these used to be like promo cards and stuff where they would put the promo symbol on there. And instead of doing like a traditional promo stuff, they would just put the set logo on there, which is very nice. They even did it all the way um, just a little while ago in Celestial Storm, which is very cool. So we also have Toys R Us cards here. We have whole page plus two pip -lops over there. And fun facts about Toys R Us, they actually might be coming back into business soon because some new company has taken over their name, copyrighted and everything. And they actually do have about 20 stores in malls around the California area in the United States, which is very cool. So we also have two of these cards. We have Cosmog and a Bulbasaur. So these cards are both from cereal ones. These are like all the... Every year they do like a promotion and stuff with Kellogg cereal. So these are two copies of those from those packs and stuff. These are just some regular promo cards and stuff. And nothing special. Um, these are McDonald's cards. Again, they do these every year. They've done them since like 2011, which is very, very nice. And finally, we have Raichus and Zekroms. These are some of my favorite cards and stuff. I just put them in here because why not? And yeah, that is it for our... Oh, look at that. We have more. I keep surprising you with these stuff, these guys. I don't know. You're probably not surprised by this point. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. So we have Snivy cards and stuff here. And yeah, this will be what, what we're going to leave it off on. And this is what we're going to start it on in our second video. If we can get to three likes on today's video, we will do a third video covering this binder right here, which I will show you the first page of it as just a sneak peek. And we have our signed by Ando, which is unlisted leaf. And we have our energies on the side here. And that's all you're getting to see in this video. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or just want to spark a conversation, be sure to leave it in the comments below. And like always, guys, have a great rest of your day.